Hi everybody, hello. I just thought I'd put together a quick video because I, I, I do this kind of thing quite a lot where people ask me to have a look at drawings and to kind of just confirm that the layouts are okay. Um, and I do, every time I look at drawings done by architects, I tend to be able to make the better use of space just by looking at the furniture layouts more closely and just kind of thinking about how best um, apartments and units can be laid out. Um, but also bearing in mind that I have to consider things like utility locations, soil pipe locations, etc. So the brief I've been given here is to kind of look at the layouts and to make sure that everything is in the right place. Um, but I'm constrained by kitchen locations. The kitchens have to be connected to the ensuite bathrooms because of the way that everything is plumbed in. Um, I've also got to make sure that I don't move things like toilets around um, because of the soil pipe locations. So um, I've got to stick within a certain set of rules. Um, I've also been told, I did uh, initially say that they should put in sliding doors on the en suites, but the client has said, taken some advice and they've been told that actually they're not the best things to put in. So I've been said, don't put in sliding doors. Um, don't move on, don't really move on suites and don't move kitchens around uh, as long well, you can move kitchens around as long as they're connected to the en suite. So given those restrictions, I've had to just check everything. Um, so I just want to show you quickly the layout of this flat and what I've what I've found uh, and um, just kind of show you where I'm coming from and what I've what I've done. So I'm going to zoom in um, to the drawing just to show you. So just first of all, uh, on the first flat in the building. This is street fronted. There's a really big window there. And what they've done is they've put a kitchen over here and the bed very close to the window. Now, if it was me personally, I really wouldn't want to be sleeping right next to a street, big street fronted window. So I just thought actually moving the bed to the other side of the room at the back here would probably be a better idea, given the fact that I don't want to be sitting next to a sleeping next to a window, a uh, big window. Um, obviously, there are going to be blinds. And I've said that that needs to have uh, frosted glass. But still, you don't want to be next to a street fronted, big street fronted window. So that was the first thing. Um, then I've moved further up the page and seen this really big kitchen put into this, uh, what is a studio flat. I thought, well, what the hell does a studio flat need a really big kitchen for? Maybe we can make better use of space there. Um, this room here, looking at this room, kind of thinking, well, where, where are we going to be able to put a wardrobe and all the furniture without making it seem really small? Uh, the same with this apartment here. It seems like a, a bet that we could make better use of space there. Apartment six is not being uh, isn't actually not being used as an apartment. That's going to be used as utility space. Um, then going up into the building onto the second floor, I've looked at apartment nine and ten, and thought actually, well, how, first of all, that kitchen there, they said there's a thousand that width there between that ensuite and the wall there is a thousand wide. Well, the kitchen's six hundred wide. That leaves four hundred for doors. Now, if the doors are 600, if the units are 600 and you've got 600 doors, you're not going to be able to get the doors open. And a lot of this kitchen is actually located in a space where you're really going to find it very difficult to use that kitchen. Um, but they've done it because the only space you can fit a bed they've, they've shown is, is here. So given that fact, where are you going to put a wardrobe? That It doesn't really show a wardrobe here. So that's a radiator there. So where are you going to put a chest of drawers. Yes, you could put a chest of drawers there. You could even put a wardrobe there if you wanted to, but it's not going to give you that much room. And it's you walk in and you'll see a big wardrobe here. There'll be hardly any room to walk through. So I don't think that's really been well thought out. I think you can do that better. And then apartment 10, again, they've put the bed here. They've put a small kitchen here. But where do you put a wardrobe? That That's a big window there. So you could put a wardrobe here, I guess. But then that gives you very little room to actually walk around and or you've you've got a tiny bit of space where you can actually you can lie down, but you know that's going to be your home. So I just thought that that really needs to be looked at a lot more carefully. There's a really long corridor, and you know I just think that's that's going to feel really very small for somebody. So um, I thought let's let's just play around with it a little bit and see what we can do to maximise the space. So I'll zoom out and show you what I've done here. So I'm, I'll go onto the first floor first of all, show you how I've laid this out now. I've moved things about a little bit. So now what I've done is I've actually found furniture that works really well with this apartment. So here's the ground floor here. So what I've done here is I've moved the kitchen from this wall here down to here. So you've actually got a kind of space here for um, 
for your to eat. You could actually put a di little dining table there, I think. There's enough room. Uh, move the bed into this corner here. You do have a window, so there's going to be light coming in. I've put a shelf there, so you can put, if you're wanting to, put a socket on that shelf and put a TV if you want to there. But we've not finalized the plan. So once the plan's been finalized, then I'll start putting in things like socket locations, etc. I start thinking about uh, like you know lighting stuff like that. So anyway, so I moved it about it does make that flat look a lot bigger, seem a lot bigger, and there's much more usable space here. And I've moved that door for the ensuite, brought it right into that corner, just to make a bit more space there. Um, then in this apartment here, apartment two, if I can go back to the original drawings, see what I've done here. Um, apartment two. So apartment two, I'll zoom in. So apartment two on this side here showed a bed. Have I changed anything there? I'm not sure. So anyway, let's have a look. Uh, apartment two. I've moved. Have I moved the kitchen? I've made the kitchen a bit smaller. That's what I've done. I've brought it. I've brought all the kitchens into line. I've actually moved a wall away. So I've, there was a wall here. I've taken that away and I've moved everything around a little bit. Just make made the space feel a lot bigger. <coughs> and put a media cabinet here, which is where you put your TV aerial. So you can put a chair to the side of the bed and have somewhere you can sit and watch TV. Um, I've also specified wardrobes that have drawers in them. Um, now, IKEA sometimes are great. They've got some great products, great prices. And to buy a, three, a, a wardrobe and a half with drawers all built in gives you much more space in the room for, for other things. So you don't have to put in a chest of drawers. Um, you can just fit a wardrobe with drawers built in. Uh, and it just frees up a lot more room. So I've kind of shifted things around, created space for a chair and a media cabinet. Same thing here. I even moved things around on this one here so you can put a sofa in um, and a media. So this actually has made this flat really nice and big. Uh, move things around a bit, move the bed, change the bed, turn the bed around, put a bedside cabinet there. So just created more space, standardized the kitchen sizes um, and just given more space for um, uh, things like media units, TVs, uh, and just made everything feel a lot bigger. This flat here, you've again got a space for a chair and a media unit. Um, move things around slightly in this top corner flat. So again, you've got space for a chair and a TV unit here. I will have to, once the plans have been finalized, look at radiator locations. But if I, you know, rather than just putting radiators in front of windows all the time, that could be moved to behind the radiator, could be moved to behind the chair. Because everything's laid out exactly, you can actually maximize the space make sure everything fits in properly and then overlay that with uh, things like where you're going to put radiators so that you can m maximize the space, make sure everything fits in and then just put the rate plonk the radiator just in the right place so you can put furniture in around it. So that's that's the first floor. I just want to focus in on the second floor because I showed you two rooms where there really was no space for wardrobe um, and I've just moved things around. This is uh, on this development apartment nine and ten. So if I showed you these flats on the original drawings again, the proposed drawings from the architect. Um, he has what he's done here, or she, I'm not sure. But they've made this flat with a really long corridor and, and no room for a wardrobe. And this room apartment here is they've put a door here, so you've really got only this this space here to walk around in. There's no space for a wardrobe and they've put the kitchen into an area where most of it you're not even going to be able to use. So I, I've moved that around. So what have I done? I've, I've made this shower room bigger. So it was 900 wide before. I've shifted that wall, this wall here, this uh, partition wall, uh, slightly out into the room, bringing, making enough room so that we can move this door to the side where that kitchen was before, because that was just crazy doing, putting a kitchen there. I've also moved the door from here where the wardrobe is now. I've moved this door from here further down into the room so you can actually fit a wardrobe into that space where the door was um, and that frees up a lot more space in this bedroom. I've moved the kitchen from here, this corner here to this side of the wall here. Now, because of moving this wall and because I've put the shower into there, obviously you've got to move the toilet. Um, however, there's not a lot of, there's, that's not a big distance between there and there. Now, what we do have to make sure is that there's enough room to walk around here and to get into the shower. So I just need to confirm this with the contractor to make sure he's happy with this layout and just to make sure that, uh, you know, there's enough room here and you can actually put that soil pipe in without too many problems. But this would be the best use of space. This would be the optimum way of doing it, really, um, moving that door there. So you create the, put the bed here, 
put a wardrobe there. I've I've, I've indicated on the drawings that it has to be 900 centimeters so you can fit a decent sized wardrobe into there. And there is an IKEA product that has a wardrobe with a side section and uh, sections for drawers and hanging space. So you don't need to put a, a chest of drawers, but um, but just to show you really, just, just wanted to demonstrate that, you know, if an architect does a set of drawings, um, I wouldn't always just assume that uh, everything is laid out properly um, because you may find that once you've everyone's finished and you're ready to put your carpets and furniture in actually you could have laid it out a lot better um, and in some cases you may not even have enough room for to put all your furniture now if you're spending tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of pounds on a development um, wouldn't it be an idea to make just to make sure that furniture fits so you're making the best use of space um, it's a sit down session um, Oh, just before, look, yes, I've put a sliding door. Well, I have put a sliding door in. I did say right at the beginning that I wasn't allowed to put in sliding doors, but actually, you know, if I wouldn't put a sliding door into that space, um, there just would not be enough room for uh, for a bed or a wardrobe. So sometimes you've got to compromise. And there are companies that I've specified here, I've spoken to the owner to say, look, if you buy your mechanicals from uh, from a comp this company, um, you'll find that they should they should be rock solid. So I have recommended a supplier for all the bits, parts for the sliding doors. Um, but you know, sometimes you do have to compromise. It's either a sliding door or no wardrobe. So anyway, that's what I've done. So uh, the object of the exercise here really was to show that, um, you know, it is worthwhile just second, having a second glance over the drawings that the architect does, um, laying out, having a, having a play around with furniture layouts, just making sure that the architect has left enough space for furniture, uh, all the furniture items that you need. Um, and once you've laid out all your furniture, you're happy with everything, and then you can then overlay things like socket locations, just so to make sure that, you know, when the bedside cabinet goes in, there's a socket next to it or behind it uh, and you don't put a socket behind the wardrobe or you don't put a radiator where the bed goes etc so um, these are things you do, do need to consider when you're doing uh, looking at drawings um, but thank you very much for your time um, please feel free to join me to uh, on my Facebook page where you'll find lots of updates and uh, I do do videos and webinars etc so please feel free to uh, like my page and um, hopefully I will speak to you soon thank you